That way I know. Are you excited? You're on. Cool. All right. So we're live. It's uh, Are we? I feel like I should start saying the date. Nah, I'm not going to do that. Maybe next time. So welcome to uh, On Set. Uh, this incredibly crowded uh, day in New York City. Everybody's late always, right? And don't worry, we're going to call them out as they come and you guys can point at them. Uh, but uh, I am Daniel Norton. This is Dave. Uh, we're waiting for Sam to come back. He's getting his makeup on. Uh, and today we're going to talk about making portraits with speed lights, so small flashes. Um, we're going to be using the Canon system today, but if you are using a different system, it's kind of the same. Um, if you have any particular questions, please feel free to ask. Um, it's going to be uh, a relatively uh, loose situation here, so well, I can pretty much do anything. Uh, I have an idea. We'll start kind of working with it, and as we have questions, we'll kind of adjust to it. So... Um, First of all, just in case you don't know. Oh, well, just in case you don't know, we stream. That was the other thing I always forget to say this. That, uh, I always think they must know if they're watching it online, but you don't, maybe they don't know. Maybe they're not sure why I'm popping up on their computer. But if you happen to not be able to be here um, at 12 o'clock, you can watch it from home uh, or wherever you are, from your car even. If you have an internet signal, you can watch it. You're on a date or something. It's not going so well. 12 o'clock, good to go. During class. During class, at especially. Work. You'll at definitely work. learn more. At work is a good place to do it. Headphones, you're basically good to go. Um, this is much more important than a job. Hey, Sam. So we're basically going to use small flashes. So like I said, we're using the Canon system today. Oh, hey, Peter. Uh, and this is, uh, we're going to mostly use these Canon 600 EXRTs, which is basically like their, their pro flash. Um, again, the concepts and stuff are the same no matter what system you have. Uh, I, if you have a particular question about your system, I might try to answer it. If I know it, I'll, I'll give it, do my best. Um, we are going to use TTL today, so most small flashes, and one of the powers of the small flash, or the great thing about the small flashes, is they use a system called TTL. So it might be, in the case of Canon ETTL, or Nikon ITTL, or Canon is, uh, Pentax's PTTL, maybe. I don't know that for sure. Maybe not. It's something. I think it's KTTL for some reason. I'm not sure why exactly. We'll find that out. If somebody knows that, let me know. Um, anyways, that's just their own system. But TTL in general means through the lens. It means that it's using the meter that is in your camera through the lens to give you the proper exposure with the flash, right? So if you've been using your camera for a while and you have a feeling about how to use it in, in a way with the meter and the camera, how to get a good results from it, this should be pretty much the same, right? If you put your subject against a really bright window behind them, uh, you know, with your camera and you just let it go on automatic, probably they're going to end up being a silhouette, right? Same thing with the flash. It doesn't know that the subject is the person. So you're good. some people feel like TTL isn't very good because they don't get great results. And I think it's just they're not really understanding how the camera sees. So always remember that you're using the meter and the camera. So it sees what it sees and you, you got to adjust to it. So we're going to use these. We're going to use them off camera primarily because we're talking about making like portraits. And generally speaking, uh, flash on camera is not going to be the most uh, flattering thing. It's, a, it's on access, which means you can't shape it to, to help work with the person's face. It's really small, which makes it a hard light source, which isn't necessarily good for uh, portraits. Hard light source is going to have really abrupt shadows. It's also very specular. Specular meaning the highlights are going to pop. So it's just, generally speaking, not a great way to shoot a, a portrait for kind of conventional beauty standards. If There's a certain style in shooting with an on-camera flash, and if you do that, then I don't know why you're watching this, because you already know how to do it, right? So. Uh, we're going to go beyond that. We are going to trigger them using the Canon system again. They make a, system, a little controller. It's called STE-3. Um, that's only relevant to you if you have these flashes. If you have a Nikon, then you use the Nikon's controller. If you have a Pentax, you use Pentax, et cetera. So what the controller allows us to do, it's a little box. And this is going to allow us to... Thank you, Seth. So this is going to allow us to have three different uh, groups. You can see that, A, B, and C. Right? And that's going to allow us to set the exposures on our flashes differently. So we can have our hair light be brighter or darker, our background light, whatever, how we want to set them up. What I generally do with these is I set up my, uh, my key light or my main light on my subject to be in my group or zone A. And then you generally, uh, the hair separation light I make B. And then any background lights I make C. I do that up front. I usually put a piece of tape on the flash so I know uh, which one's which because they start getting shuffled up on the table and all of a sudden you get... Uh, out of control, um, or if we start just messing around. But having, oh good, I was waiting for you. I could only delay so long for, I know. It, it, next time bring pizza if you come late, because I, you know, we'll kind of hungry. So, uh, so we're gonna use, this is gonna be my main light, the A light, and here's the controller. Um, so number one, what we, we wanna do, 
If we want to do this style of flash photography, which is basically like controlled portraiture, what we want to do is eliminate from our space any available light, right? Because I don't want these lights lighting Sam, right? I mean, the, we actually have nice professional lights here because we're doing a, a, you know, a presentation, but generally speaking, you don't want the available light. You want to use the light that you're bringing. You may find times, maybe we'll mess around with this a little bit, where you can mix them together, but in this case, we're going to try to eliminate it. So the way we do that is we set our camera to such an exposure that when we make a photo, none of the light in the space is affecting our shot. So to do that, you set your ISO at the lowest ISO your camera will go to within its normal range, which is uh, 100 in this case. We're using a Canon uh, 5D Mark IV. Then we set our shutter speed at the fastest shutter speed in which we can synchronize with flash. Now, most speed lights will allow for what's called high speed sync, um, but we're just not gonna use that because it's not really needed now. And, then I can do an entire other class on high speed sync and get more money. So we're not going to do that. So you got to come back for that. Um, so we're just going to say 200th of a second is the standard synchronization speed for that, this camera. Your camera might be whatever. It depends on your camera. Once we do that, the third factor is going to be our, our aperture. And what we want to set that at is basically an aperture that makes the space completely black. When we make the photo, we want a black frame, right? So I have a 51.2 lens. I can tell you 1.2 is not going to work. If we do that, we're going to get a picture because that's tremendously open. Uh, probably somewhere around 5.6 or f8 is usually good inside, uh, which we, we come here a lot, so we know that it's f8 usually in here. So if we set ourselves up at f8 and we make that photo, um, we should get a black frame. Ah, perfect. I thought you were watching from home. Okay. I took one at eight and five six. Okay, good. So Dave took one at eight and five six. Now, if you are a regular. She's regular. If you're a regular, you know that we usually just shoot at f8 because I'm usually using like pencil or Ellen Chrome or Profoto or some studio lights, and they're so powerful. One of the drawbacks to using a small flash is you only got so much power, right? They're not super, super powerful compared to big flashes. They're really powerful compared to like these hot lights. We're gonna easily be able to overpower them, but I'm probably gonna be running these flashes pretty high on the power scale. Uh, to get an F8 or even a 5.6 once I put it into like a softbox. So we want to, in this case, have the most open aperture we can get and still get a black frame with speed lights. That's one of the things you're going to want to take into consideration. Obviously, depth of field is another thing you want to think about. Um, 5.6 should give us plenty of depth of field. I don't typically like to shoot portraits wide open. Some people love that. If you like that, more power to you. Not for me, but, you know. Back when I was uh, a young man last year, uh, and, I, and I could see better, I would shoot wide open, but now I need to have enough space, you know, to focus and everything. And for so, you want. Uh, yeah, we always want, I, I like to have people in, in focus, uh, uh, call me old fashioned. Maybe that'll come back in style. But you know, when you first get a fast lens, you gotta shoot it wide open all the time, because yeah, you know I shot this with the 51.2. After you've done that a few times, you're like, mm -hmm. okay. So anyways, we have our black frame, um, and to make our exposure, because we're using a TTL system, it's as simple as taking our flash, putting it in the proper mode, which is uh, called the slave mode. We'll turn both things on. And we should get, in this Canon system, a little green light. See a little green light there? Nope, you don't see it. There's a little green light. What mode is it? What? What mode is it? Slave. Slave. Yeah. Some people call it. What's it on Nikon? What about two stops? I don't know what it's called. Uh, Nikon, I think they also call it slave. Is that true? For what? For the remote flash? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what? It's called C4, but what does it No, no, no. We're not talking about the same thing. Okay. So now that it's in this mode, again, well, oh, good. I was waiting for you. Now that we're in this mode, uh, the flash should communicate with our, with our uh, camera. And when I point the flash at Sam and we take a photo. Is my chart on? Yeah, yeah, it's on. And I have a green light and everything. Yeah, yeah. It's very exciting. You got it. Right? It. it should take a picture, right? Theoretically, we have a shot. Now he's lit up, he's, he's evenly uh, lit. You know, we got a little shadow coming from the side. It looks really nice. Okay, good. So next week's class is gonna be on making it, no, this is just, so this is it, right? It's not a great shot, right? It's, it's a small flash. It's making a pretty punchy light on him. There's a shadow on the background. It's not what we wanna be, but just to demonstrate, this is basically how you make QTL work. Now we might feel, because I think you feel that way, I can feel, I can tell it, that it's a little bit hot, right? These TVs always make everything look brighter than they are though. I think it's actually probably fine. But if we, if we come in close to the highlight, I'm tethered into Capture One here, so we can actually see. 
And I could see that even in the highlight, we have detail on his skin, so he's actually properly exposed. If you felt like it was too bright for you, though, you can actually tell the flash. You can say, hey, man, I like to name my flashes. Yeah. This one's uh, Joe. Not, not Anthony? No, this one's Anthony, because it has an A on it. Uh, sometimes Tony. Yes. So this is Anthony. It lets say, hey, Anthony, man, that's a little bit too bright. Could you turn that down a bit, right? And from our controller, we can say, go down a third of a stop or something like that, right? Um, because the thing about TTL is that it meters every single time you take a photo. So you're not turning the power down from, let's say, half power to quarter power. You're saying, when you meter it next time, get the exposure that you think is right, and then give me a little bit less, please. Right, so we can do that. It's always good to say please to the flashes. because Let's do two thirds because we want to go for it. What's that? Remote. Nikon calls it remote. Thank you, Seth. She was testing my knowledge level of, of, of the specific terms from Nikon and Canon. There we go. Perfect. So we turned it down a smidge, right? Yep. So there we go to there, right? Fixed it. So if you're working really quickly, you're by yourself, you can just dial it in, you're good to go, right? Now, before you start anything, though, it's always a good idea to set everything back to zero because otherwise you'll start getting confused as to why things aren't working. Um, if you are only using one flash, it's sometimes it's a good idea just to use the, uh, the exposure compensation in the camera. The flash exposure compensation in the camera is just easier. I think you have to with, with some systems. Uh, not with this SU ST3, I don't think. The head is zoomed at 24. So that's a good question. So the question is the flash head. One cool thing about speed lights, right, because they're designed to be on, used on camera. Um, when it's on my camera and I zoom my lens, it, the flash head inside zooms. And the, way, the reason it does that is it to, get, to give you the most effective coverage, right? When you take the flash off the camera, it, most flashes will typically zoom as wide as they go, which is, in this case, 24. Well, as wide as they go without pulling out the little, the little doodad in the front. Yeah, and then you can zoom in, in more if you wanted like a punchier light. We might play around with that a little bit. But so it's at 24 now. We could zoom it in more if we didn't want it like to do the background stuff. I could I could manually zoom the flash. That's a good question. Um, but right now we're just basically showing how TTL works, so I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. Um, what we want to actually do is make our light, so light source nicer. So in order to make it nicer, we generally want to make it bigger. Bigger flash is going bigger light source rather is going to be soft. Soft light has a nice wraparound quality. It's the, the transition from the neutral to the shadow is more gentle. So we get ourselves basically what tends to be a more flattering type look. How do we make our flash bigger? We can move it closer, but because it's so small, no matter, no matter how close I put it to him, it's never going to be bigger than his head, right? Which means it's not going to be soft. Um, you always measure all things against the size of the person's head. That's how you know if they're soft or not. So I have this here, which is actually bigger than his head. It's bigger than most people's heads. Not everybody's, right? So this is a, uh, I'm doing pretty good, but if I stop saying what stuff is, please just ask. This is a Westcott Rapid Box Octa. Octa, I think it's a 24. People, somebody's gonna ask me how big it is, and I don't know, I think it's 24. Um, I'll say it's 24 and you can't know. Um, so what this is doing now is, right, I'm shooting my flash from the back. It's gonna penetrate this uh, octagon. It's gonna make it two feet. Right? Also, it's got, it's got this diffusion material inside, right? The diffusion material is going to help make the light uh, a little bit more diffuse, right? One thing that, uh, that a lot of people that use speed lights a lot, excuse me here, like to do when they put it inside of a box is use this little thing, right? I'm going to use it today because people like it and they always ask me about it. Um, I always lose these things, so I don't usually have it on there, but yeah, if you, if you use, well, the reason for this, I mean, you'll get some diffusion, but it's, it's going to spread the light out a little bit more to maybe fill the, fill the, the box a little better. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it, it comes with the flashes usually now. Um, you can also put your soap in it when you're in the shower. It is not to make the flash softer. It doesn't make the flash softer. It makes it more diffuse. Thank you, Dave. So I'm just going to stick this in the back. For some reason, it says ETTL because I think I hit a button. More power. In 
interesting. Yeah, just use it. I think it'll work. It's green. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it. yeah, yeah. You're good now. Yep. All right. So, the does it need more power? Yes. Do I care? No. Why? Because I'm using TTL. It does all the math, right? No matter what I put in front of this thing, it's going to try to give me a good exposure. If it can, we might not have enough power. At some point, your flash will, there we go. At some point, your flash will not be powerful enough, right? But there we go. That's a softer light, right? I just kind of put it there. I didn't really set it up or anything. We'll get it a little nicer. But um, we can see the difference there, right, already. I'm going to select both of these, right? So this is the harder uh, light. This is just a bare flash. You might like that. This is a little bit more classic, right? And also you get a nice, uh, nice catch light in the eyes. You got gentle shadows coming across uh, his nose. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to bring this. I'm actually going to change it slightly. I'm going to move it a little bit more like this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do what they call feathering it slightly, kind of away. Because I want the light to, remember, this is an octagon, which by the way, if you're only going to use one light to light somebody, I just, people ask me this all the time, so I'll, I'll answer it now. Um, Octagons generally are great if you're only going to use one light source because they tend to wrap around just because the shape of them, right? If I use like a strip, it's only going to hit one part of his face. The octagon's going to wrap more. So I can see that this part of the light is hitting this part of his face, right? I'm getting more even light across his entire face. So I like octagon lights if it's my only source. I, you lose a little bit of control in a sense because it's a, a kind of more of a wraparound, but it works really well if it's your only source. Um, size, again, matters, right? A bigger is going to be softer. This is good for a speed light at some point. Your, uh, your light source will be too, uh, your, uh, your diffuser could be too big where, see now we got a little more on that side of his face. Your light source could be so big that your flashes can't handle it anymore, right? So for us, um, I think this is a good size. You know, you could go bigger for sure. Um, but if you do, you're gonna have to start working in darker spots, right? Because we could, we could open up the lens a little bit. We could go, uh, uh, a little bit more uh, ISO, but if we start doing that, right, then we're going to start picking up the ambient light in the space, which we don't want. So for me, uh, this is a good size. If you want to shoot with a giant box, you've got to make sure you're doing it somewhere where it's darker because your flash is not going to be powerful enough. You can also use multiple flashes. Some people, oh good, I was waiting for you. Some people could, uh, uh, some people could, uh, some people like to, I should say, put multiple flashes inside the one box. That's another way to do it. Um, at, 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 a, at a certain point, though, money-wise, it's going to become like diminishing returns. If you have to put a bunch of flashes inside a box, at a certain point, you're better off not using speed lights, right? Yeah, that's not, that's not terrible. All right, so we're already getting a bit of a nicer shot, um, right? We're getting nice light, but it's kind of a very simple single light shot, kind of uh, basic. We're going to try to do something a little more classic. So I want to add a separation light. So the, by the way, I'm using C-stands because that's what we always use here because that's what I have. Uh, the, one of the advantages of using small flash is that we could be using really lightweight small stands. So if you're traveling around, you don't need to use C-stands. <coughs> I mean, Seth always uses C-stands, but you don't have to. Um, you can certainly use small stands. Do you want to go small green or do you want to go... Let's just start like this and then we'll... Oh. That's a good idea. Eh, no, we'll put the grid on the background maybe. Okay, cool. So again, I have these labeled. you want to grid the strip? We'll do with first, without, and then with. So this is B, Barbara. You'll be tested on the names of the flashes after. By the way, this is how I lose things. You just saw me put that there, so it'll be gone. This is now our second flash. I've already got it set up in the B zone. So it's in slave mode uh, or remote if you're of Nikon. Uh, and it's B. Again, it's 24 millimeters. Um, I would put that little white dome on there, but I've already walked over here, so I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, and again, these rapid, but this is a rapid box strip. Uh, you can tell because it's skinny. And I like strip boxes for separation or hair lights because it gives you a little more control, a little more edge control, right? So I'm just going to kind of place it here. Now, this is one of those areas where TTL can be tricked. We'll see what's going to happen, right? Um, but generally speaking, the way the meter in your camera works is a reflected meter, right? So it's used to like bouncing off things and coming back. If you start throwing light towards the lens, it can trick the, set, the meter in the camera. So typically if you're backlighting something, expect your first shot might not be perfect. So we'll try it and we'll see. And then we'll adjust, right? Sure. 
Sure. So the, the question is, uh, for anybody who came after we went over that part, uh, the settings of the camera. We're shooting at an f5.6, 100 ISO, 200th of a second. And the reason for that is because we want to get the room dark. So that's an exposure that gets all the ambient light gone. Um, and we're using a, a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens uh, because for some reason the 85 was gone. Uh, so I took the 50. I typically wouldn't use such a wide lens for portraits. I mean, I would use a... a... Okay, so... Obviously, adding that backlight makes him look a little bit confused. Uh, you know, he's like, why is there more than one light here? What's going on? So we definitely have a few problems. One is it's a, it's a smidge hot, right? It's, it's bright. We, we, we might want it to be a little bit hot, but that seems overexposed for sure. And also, the spread of it is hitting the background. Um, probably in an unflattering way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... You remove this, put that on, right? That goes over this, right? Okay, we'll find out. Okay, so we've got a grid. So the, what, the, what the grid does is it sits in front of your light, and you can uh, it, it channels the light, right? It gives you edge control. Um, it also tends to add a little bit of contrast, um, but primarily it's for edge control. So we're going to put that on there. This one is sometimes called an egg crate uh, grid because it looks like something you put eggs in. Right? Okay. I'm assuming that's why they call it that. I'm not actually sure. That seems right. OK, and again, even though we're putting something in front of the box, we don't need to change anything on the camera, because the TTL is going to compensate. We are going to change something because it's going to be too bright, but for now, we're just going to do this. So now we have the strip on there. It's always important to use as much equipment as possible, because you charge by the amount of equipment, as we've gone over before. Mm -hmm. OK. That pretty much eliminates the light from the background, gives us a little bit more control. It's still a smidge bright. So now we're gonna tell the TTL system, hey man, Barbara, uh, could you give us a little bit less light there? And then Barbara's gonna take care of it. That's right, every one of them can be told independently. Right now, Anthony's doing a good job. We'll see if I remember the names. I can't remember the model's names, but for some reason I know the names of the flashes. It tells you where my priorities are. Questions so far? How do I come up with such great names? Well, you know, practice. There we go. OK, so now we're getting good separation. Uh, it's, you know, it's bright, but it has detail. Uh, I think it looks pretty good, but if we wanted it even darker, we could do that maybe. Let's go a smidge darker. That's a technical term, smidge. Other questions? Any answers? So I could use some of those. No. Okay. I'm sorry. Thank you. It took me all day to do that. Yeah. So. Actually, I did not. No, I didn't design this. The trick to all this is just have Dave set it up, and then you're, you could just just call Dave if he sets it up. You're just gonna do it. So yeah, so now we're just making a slight adjustment, and then we're going to add a little light in the background to kind of give us our, our uh, completed uh, shot. Okay, well, interesting. That's very subtle. Okay, I mean, it's actually still kind of nice. It's a little maybe, maybe darker than we need it to be. What was that down? Uh, we were down like one and two-thirds. One and two-thirds. So maybe we'll do just like one or something. One stop. One stop. Why not? You know, how much? Because I get this question a lot. It really depends. You know, it, it, if you're just setting things up, um, you want to kind of get a feel for it, get, get, your, get your eye. Hmm, that didn't seem to be good. Uh, you, you're going to see kind of how you want it to feel. What I would say is that depending on your camera system, you want to make sure you stay within the, the dynamic range of your camera. So shoot it a little bit flatter than you think you want it to be because people always like to add contrast in post and you can't always judge by your back of your screen. So let's say if you're not blowing out your highlights, you're probably fine, but maybe be a little bit less than you think you want it to be. Um, okay. Other questions? Maybe. Okay, so something's happening. We've got a little weirdness going on, which sometimes happens, right? It's one of those things whenever you use any kind of technology. If you're in the middle of your shoot and all of a sudden the thing's just not working, 
just figure it out. It's not gonna take a second. Don't stress out about it. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes you could turn one of the flashes off. Sometimes turn it back on. Firing, uh, it's definitely firing. We tried that, so it's getting signal. And he didn't move, right? Still hitting him. Yeah, I'm gonna try. yeah it is. So one thing you can do is you can test fire the flashes to make sure they're hitting where they need to go. We're going to slightly change the meter system. So we're kind of adjusting the camera slightly as well. I mean, from what I can tell, it doesn't look like it's firing at all. Or it's not sinking anyways, for whatever reason. So it happens. Oh, you know what it could be too? Batteries. Yeah. There we go. OK, me standing next to it definitely helped. OK. Oh, switch it to spot. Uh, I think it's still a little bit too hot, though. We're going to bring it down. But actually, yeah, if you start having weird TTL issues, uh, check, change your batteries. That's one of the, the last things you think of and probably the first thing. Someone suggests that they close the aperture down to change the exposure. You want to go into why that doesn't work with TTL. Oh. OK, so. One question we're having online is, or a statement or whatever, is saying uh, close down the aperture because it's, it's too dark. Well, the thing is, is that any adjustments I make to the camera, the TTL is going to try to overcompensate uh, for. Because the way TTL works is it looks at your camera settings and tries to give you that exposure. So we don't want to change our exposure as much as our exposure compensation, right? So we want to say, hey, F8, but underexpose it, right? That's what we want to do. Yeah, there we go. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I typically they get that question a lot. I usually use like the matrix or the middle, whatever they call it in Canon, the little box with the circle meter, the one with the generic metering. Um, uh, you can use spot metering. In this case, we're pretty close, and it, so it's probably not an issue. Um, but it can affect it. So play around with the metering system, whatever feels comfortable for you. I usually use the most generic metering system though when I'm using TTL, at least to start. All right. So we've got a good basic exposure, and again, we don't want to change it. If we were to change, we can actually do it. Just go to uh, go to uh, f11. Although I don't know if the flashes have enough power to give us f11. What do we want? Eight, five, six? Do we have maybe f8? And it should theoretically give us the same shot, just with more depth of field. That's actually one of the beauties of TTL. We can adjust our uh, aperture to get more or less depth of field, and it will keep the yeah. I mean, it pretty much stayed the same. You can see that's not a stop darker, right? And that's because the flashes are our only light source, and they're what's giving us the exposure. If the, if the available light was affecting our shot, then that would make a difference, right? Same thing with shutter speed. But since we've blown out all the available light, we're only using the, the flashes, it should stay the same with TTL. Cool, but let's go back to 5.6 because I don't want to waste my batteries. They only give me so many batteries. I only get four batteries a year per flash. Yeah. I had to steal all sorts of batteries, so no, none of the speakers for the rest of the week will have any uh, microphone batteries. All right, this is not going to work like that. So I'm, for the background light, I think we're going to uh, use a grid. This is the Rogue grid, three-in-one grid system. And basically what it is is okay, three, two, you got two little uh, honeycomb grids, right? And one is uh, denser than the other. One's 45, the other one is 25. And when you put them together, you get an even tighter grid. So I don't think we need that much. I think I'm going to go with 45. So what we're going to do here is this grid is going to give us essentially kind of not a circle of light, like a sharp circle of light like you get with the, with the, the snoot, more like a feathered kind of circle of light. And we're going to just throw this onto the background just to give ourselves like kind of a uh, a vignette kind of uh, lit up background. It just fits on the front of my speed light and we're going to use this one in zone C. Perfect. So when you're putting a grid or anything that's a little more tight onto a, a subject, sometimes it's hard to see it. So what you can do is test fire the flash as you're aiming it um, to get a feel for where it is in the background. That's usually very useful. Uh, just in case you're wondering, like, how do you know where to put the lights? Like, we can basically take this light, any of them, really. Like, even this one, as we were setting it up, I could have just been like, OK, yeah, a little bit more this way, you know, and that can adjust the, the flash. Which one did you put 
Uh, that's, uh, that's a 45, so it's probably going to spread pretty much. Yeah. I mean, at 45, it might even hit them a little bit on the shoulders. We'll see. It's not super, super tight, but I figure we'll start that way, and we can always adjust. Questions? Yes. Oh, I saw you. <laughs> okay, sure. So the way that we're firing the flashes, oh, that's pretty cool. So the way that we're triggering and controlling everything is we're actually using Canon's own system, which is called STE3. Uh, it's their radio remote system. It can give us TTL to the flashes. It works with the, their flashes that have that. Nikon now has one called blah, 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 whatever Nikon is called. And of course, you, of course you could use something like a pocket wizard that also has a TTL capability, sure. Yeah. Yeah, Nikon's, uh, what's that saying is Nikon's system is called CLS, but I'm talking about the actual machine. Yeah. It's called like MD-104237, because that's easy to remember. Perfect. All right. So we're getting our little vignette of light. Maybe we need to be tighter. Let's be tighter. So, yeah, so we're going to switch it out. We have this... Uh, 25? Or do you, yeah, let's just, or do you want to go all the way? Let's go all the way. All right, we're just going to put them both in. When you put them both in, you get, the, you get doubled up. Become it becomes, 16. I think, 16, if you do that math. Actually, I didn't do math. It says right on it. I, I wouldn't even know what math that would be. But basically, you're... But this is going to give us a tighter circle of light, so he has that little kind of spotlight behind him. You see when you light somebody with a little light behind them, they get happier. Questions? No? Okay, oh, yeah, good. If anybody has a question about why I'm putting my coffee on top of my computer now, it's because somebody came in and broke my cup holder. I just want to point that out there, because you know what I'm talking about. I have this cup holder here. It's broken. Oh, yeah. I'm to yeah, see, yeah, yeah. What's up with that? How am I going to do this? You can just hold it. I'll tell the tools to send you Yeah, so. I mean, I have had it for like four years, but what's that? Cheap labor, yeah. Well, it's super useful. It's one of my favorite things about this table, and now it's broken. So I'm going to complain about it until I get another one. That's how you get things in life. Okay. Essentially, we're going to uh, get a smaller circle of light. We'll see what it looks like, and then we'll adjust from there. There we go. That's pretty cool. Maybe we'll put it directly behind them. Like maybe like at this point, because it's so small, it might be better for me to adjust while you're looking. Yeah. So. Here's where you got, you know, little little buddy, buddy action. I'm gonna go a little lower too. I want to get like just under his shoulders. So I'm gonna kind of adjust it, and Dave's gonna look through the camera. Uh, turn it to the right. Ooh. Get a little more. That's probably good right there. Let's okay, see. so we're gonna try it. It's pretty cool. That's that's not bad. Let's go. All right, so now we have a little circle of light back there, kind of cool little effect. I mean, we could also just put a, just light the background. I mean, you can do a lot of different things you could do. Maybe what we'll do is add a little color to it, make it a little kind of mysterious. Mysterious. And also, if it was too bright or too dark, you could adjust that as well, same way we've been doing everything else. Let's put blue, I think, if, the, if we have blue. See, I asked for a color, and I don't even know if we have it. Nice. Please send the cup holder, 42 West 18th Street. It's the whole piece, too. Yeah, it's the whole tether tools. Is it tether tools? Oh, really? A C stand clamp to. That would actually be pretty cool. I would take a couple of clamps into a C stand. All right, look at all these. Oh, purple is also nice. Deep purple. Deep purple. It's also a band. Special K lavender? Special K? I don't know about that. I don't know. Like what? Just blue. Oh, all right. Just uh, blue. Medium blue green. Medium blue green. I think we gotta go purple. Green. Purple. Yeah, deep purple. Yeah, he feels like a purple guy. Yeah. Or the lavender. Lavender or deep purple. Deep purple. Oh, he said deep purple, so we're going. Deep purple. Okay. All right. So. You came late. You, you're both. Okay. You don't. Yeah, I don't ever listen to you. <laughs> if you want lavender, you get it. Then put it in there yourself. Okay. So maybe we'll put lavender on the back of his head. Hey, Bill. By the way, Bill takes the most amazing pictures of water. What's your Instagram? What's your Instagram? Will6x7. Will6x7. Check it out. 6x7. 6x7. 
Six X seven. Six X seven. Okay, check it out on Instagram. It's pretty cool. He, like streams going by, it's very relaxing. Okay. It's super exciting to 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 uh, shoot moving water like that. Waterfalls. Oh, that's interesting. So, um, somebody online is saying they have a system like this. They're using Group A, Group B, and the Group B lights are firing after. Yeah. Are you getting a double exposure? Because technically, they do fire slightly after, because the the the, the groups. Because what happens is, your there's what's called a pre flash, which you're generally only going to see out of the first lights, and they like activate the other lights. So. You, they kind of do fire, but it happens so fast that I'm surprised you're seeing it. You must be like, awesome. Or doing rear curtain sync. But if there's not a double exposure, then I just wouldn't worry about it. Just tell the clients that you did it on purpose, charge extra for it, and be done. Yeah, well, Dave can see it, but Dave's got like bionic eyes. I can't see it. No, everybody can see it except for Daniel. I don't care. Yeah, it does definitely fire first. Yes, can you see the pre-flash as well that you're calling me out on it? Okay, all right. That's a good question. Who makes the Octobox? I think his name is Byron. Uh, it's, it's a Westcott, uh, Rap Bucks, a Westcott, FJ Westcott. Yep. I think, yeah, that was, that was kidding, obviously. Byron's kind of a cool name. Yeah, there's actually a kit that's like, yeah, look at it, you pointing that out. Yeah, actually, what we did, because I was cheating, I was like, oh, uh, speed light portraits. They have like this rapid box speed light portrait cape. Where is it? It was like, I don't know how much it was. Not that bad. It actually comes with everything you need. Although, you know, it didn't come with the grid, which I think they should add that. Westcott, add the grid to this. Because um, you need the grid, really. Right? Everybody needs a grid. Oh, there we go. All right. Wow. There we go. Okay. Hmm. What happened to the separation light? Didn't fire. Did you put a little gel on it? Yeah, I think the battery's dying on this bad boy. Do we have more batteries, Mr. Seth, please? Let's kill it for a second. Thanks, Seth. Well, I don't know. They're, give them to some other presenter. <laughs> Somebody we don't like. No, I'm just but you know what I do with batteries, by the way? For the remote controls. I put them in my remotes. Not these kind of remotes, but remotes like for your TV. Because the flash requires so much juice that, um, see, that's better. That, you know, sometimes the batteries can be like, two-thirds discharge or something, and then it just won't fire. But if you put it in like your, your TV remote or something. Nobody has TVs in New York, though, so you don't even talk about Okay, let's see if that happened. There we go. All right. Cool, so now you got a little purple action. See, now that it's purple, I feel like it's too small, right? Maybe we'll make it a little bigger, cover the background, right? Okay, maybe we'll switch back to the 20, whatever. The wider, uh, or pull it back. I think we might put a little color on the side light. Is that what you're asking for? <laughs> you think it's what? Uh, yeah. So the 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 comment is that she feels like the 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 hair, the separation or hair light is a little bit too bright, even though you said it was perfect before. What? See, it's actually a good point, though. No. It, it, depending on what you're doing, right, when we start to change the shot, little things, uh, like it looks better or worse, depending on what, on what you're doing. So um, we may actually... Uh, huh. Or it's not powerful enough. Yeah. Okay. 
I actually think I see it. I think the, the, the flash is probably topping itself out, but from that far away, we're just not getting enough light. We're shooting through a really dense purple gel. We're using a really tight grid. We're just not getting enough power out of it. So we're going to switch to a wider... Uh, yeah, we're doubled up, plus we got the gel. Yeah. Yeah, we're not messing around. But this is one of those things, right? And, and the more you kind of play around with your speed lights and do different setups, you're going to kind of see the limitations and work within them, you know, when you want to do portraits. There's definitely a lot of uh, advantages to using a small flash in a situation like this. You don't have to use uh, plug anything in. If you go into some, uh, to a, a place to make a portrait of somebody, let's say, especially if it's a, a high-tech type place, let's say you have to, some kind of programmer in a big room full of computers, you know, you don't want to be plugging stuff in. Uh, small flash is great for that, you know. So, but, you, you know, you got to work within the... Oh, interesting. Yeah. Cool. All right. So that's pretty cool. Now we just have to make some adjustments. Now remember that the uh, every single one of the lights is is metering, right? The the camera is metering, which means every time you add a light, you may have to tweak each one individually because it's taking overall uh, exposure of the situation. So that's why, you know, it, it might be brighter now than it was before in theory. Yeah, a little bit. There we go. That's better. Bring down tiny bit more. Actually, I like it a little hot, maybe a little less. Yeah, I, I, do I prefer certain double? I like the Orcells. I know, I'm old fashioned, old fashioned copper top, and it's not very good for the environment, I know, but you know. Rechargeable ones and loops are pretty good. Uh, but generally, rechargeable batteries are a little bit less powerful. They're usually like 1.4 versus 1.5. So the small flashes. Um, Seth, would you like some certain ones, would, would you say earlier? Doracell, yes. Yeah, Doracell guy. I'm just, I'll tell you which ones I don't like, but I'm not allowed to say anything negative. <laughs> Put it this way. If you're getting like 30 batteries for $5, those probably aren't going to be the good ones. I mean, yeah. Um, it depends, but what I will say is this, if you use small flashes a lot, invest in good rechargeable batteries, because it's going to cost you a fortune in batteries. If you <laughs> use it sometimes, which is more the category I fall into, I just regular copper top door cells is what I use, because I don't want to have rechargeable batteries, it's like having a pet, you know, you got to like charge them, discharge them, I, 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 I don't, I don't want to deal with that, you know, so for me, I use those. But if you're going to, let's say you shoot uh, weddings and events, and you do like small flash all the time, then invest in something like uh, like Eneloops or something. Oh, this is interesting. It's it's very uh, like 1980s, uh, yeah. like 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 a, a barbershop uh, magazine or <laughs> right, like the magazines that you get in barbershops. Do they not have those anymore? We get number 16. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you point at it and it's like, it's like nobody's gonna nobody's gonna look like him when they get their hair. They'll have the same haircut. They just won't look like that. Teen drama from 1993. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sure, that's a good question. So, yeah. what you call things? There we go. So Did you get what you wanted? He is good, right? The the trick to all this is just to like just let Dave do stuff while yeah, I just right? talk about random things. No, he just he just feathered it. So what you do? You just feathered it. That's so you didn't turn the out? no, no feather. Oh. At first, it was it was hitting the, the lens too much and it was causing. It to yeah. Break. So the <laughs> issue is is that. Remember, using TTL. So this is the same thing. It wasn't giving the lens flare, but it was shooting too much into the lens. So by changing the angle of the light, it actually just did a better job in compensating. Plus, we're feathering the light and using the edge of it. It's further away. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of like an overall. Um, but Dan, so what was the other question? No, I forgot what it was because I got distracted by the by the Russians in the front. Oh, right. So. Uh, yeah, the Russians come in and they start giving a, attacking me in the front. I'm going to make you sit in the back. Um, so the, uh, I only have two though this time. When there's three, it can get a little bit much. So when the, uh, oh, what you call things, right? So this is actually a question we get a lot. I, I, I just often use the term hair light because that's just what I call it. But any light coming from the back is, you can call it a separation light. A, a, a kicker is another way to call it. A backlight. I usually don't like to say backlight when I'm teaching because then the people get that confused with background light. Yeah. Um, but any kind of light that's separating the person from the background, maybe a, a truer term would just be separation light if you just want to be more generic as far as terms go. Because, um, I mean, he's got hair. 
So it's kind of a hair light. Plus, if you call it a hair light and then you shoot people that are bald, you can make that joke. And you know, they love that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like terms are, are, are one of those things that, if, you, if you're instructing somebody who's working for you to set up a light, you probably need to call it the same thing consistently. If you're a photographer, you just want to make it look good. Like, so whether it's Rembrandt or Loop or Hair or Division or whatever, it, it's light, right? It, this is the light that's giving the separation. That's what's important. It, that's my personal. Uh, if you want to make 1980s hair magazine for the purple is what's winning there. Yes. All right, so other questions, thoughts, comments? What do you think? That's a good looking guy back there. You want to be a model? <laughs> No, I'm pointing right at you. You know I'm pointing at you. You got a great face. That's how I recruit people. <laughs> well, no, because you look back. You knew I was. Mean, you got a good job on. So, uh, cool. All right, so let's change it up. We got time, right? Think so. There we go. Oh, we got like 15 minutes. All right, let's mix it up a little bit. Let's uh, let's let's do the grid as the separation light. Okay. Right. Let's just try that. So we're going to swap it out a little bit, and we'll take the grid and, and use that as our background light. Um, Want to leave the purple on there? Should we leave the purple on there? Yeah, let's, let's do like almost a, 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 almost a profile, like three quarters that way. We'll use the grid as the background, like kind of kickery uh, light, and let's use the, uh, the, this guy as our, as our key. So I like strip banks when I want to do something like a little more dramatic I like to use these as, as key lights because they give me a lot of control as to where I can put it I can really uh, control where my lights gonna fall so now of course if I was doing this right I would switch the flashes because now of course we got our B as our key light. we're not gonna do that because because we like to get ourselves in trouble <laughs> so we know now B is our key light we're gonna kill a uh, which Dave already did and we're going to let this guy be our, our main light. It's going to hit him in the face and, and kind of like let the background fall into darkness. And then this one here is going to give him a little purple uh, halo, uh, which we'll probably change. So I don't know if we want it to be purple in every single shot. I mean, I like purple. Red. All right, well, I'm changing it. No, you didn't give, you either didn't give them all to me or there's only greens. That is all greens. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, I thought there was more colors. Yeah, they give you like a there's gazillion colors. There's only the blue and greens. All right. They, they organize them by style. Oh, that's smart. They give you this little, uh, oh, the correction filters. Oh, they even tell you how many stops it takes up. This is pretty neat. Yeah. All right, so yellows and reds. How much is it? Priceless. Where's the blue? Uh, it may be, but it's not that expensive. No, she wants red. How about rust? I think rust will look good on him. I'm going to go with rust. So I've never used rust before. $30. It's a $30 $30. For you, $30. The gels, not the... The grid's like, I don't know, 100 bucks or something? Everything's 100 bucks. For you, $500. Looking at the Special price for you. Today only. Cool. It's forty and it comes with a gel starter kit, which is like a sampler. Nice. Yeah, so they've got a lot of different packages, so there's questions about pricing. I don't know. I mean, if you're, you could just go onto the website and look if you're looking online. Uh, Seth's looking here. It's like roughly $40 for the, for the grid set. And it comes with some starter gels, you said, right? There you go. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's awesome. Perfect. So, yeah. Hmm. Sometimes when you're using TTL, right, this is what's going to happen. And when this happens, you just take another picture. If it's so crazy messed up like this, I usually don't change anything until it does it more than once. Yeah. 
There we go. Okay. Because if it was a little bit off, I'd say, oh, TTL's off. When it's that far off, there's something weird going on. It's a computer, you know, whatever. You just try it again, right? So now we've got something that's a little bit like, almost like a, I like that rust. I actually like it as the key. Can you just spin the other way and look towards this light? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to switch it around and make it as, uh, well, and this light's slightly coming from the back. It's going to throw some light there. It almost looks like he's on fire. He's on fire. Oh, interesting. I like it. See, that's cool. And then uh, we'll kick in the backlight now. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's definitely stage light. If there's something going on. Let's kill, let's drop the, the backlight by like two stops. So it's just, just barely there. Okay. Yeah, B, sorry. Now, now I'm completely throwing everything off because I said at the beginning to make A your key and now we're like all over the place. This is what happens. You're asking if your issue might have been with the metering setting. No, no. The, 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 it, wasn't, it wasn't an issue with the metering setting. Sometimes this will happen in TTL. You could be shooting there a portrait and you're taking 50 pictures and they're all perfect and all of a sudden you get one that's crazy different. Just take another picture. Almost always it just works itself out. I don't know what it is. It's a glitch. Um, if you take a couple and it stays that way, then maybe change your metering or change the thing. But if you get one that's like off the wall, yeah. just take another picture. I guarantee you 90% of the time it'll just fix itself. Hey, Moses. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting closer to where we want to be. I think a little more, yeah. It's actually, I think also the angle of it is, is weird. I'm gonna also take this guy, and I'm gonna go like this. I'm gonna change the angle of the angle. Oh, you did like it. Okay, oh no, Dave liked it the other way. Put it back. No, Dave wants it back the other way. Dave wanted it the other way. Well, I don't wanna take the grid off because it might hit the background. We'll see. There we go, nice. Yeah, no, I, 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 I like it, I like that sitting in here. What's interesting here is I feel like it's interesting, and I think what I'm not liking about it, my initial thought was it's too bright. But I think what's actually wrong is it's the wrong color. I feel like you've got this like completely neutral and then you have this awesome face, which just doesn't work at all for me. I think it needs to be a contrasting color, like maybe blue. But let's do this though, just because uh, why I feel like it. Change your white balance, right? To, uh, to tungsten, and let's just see what that does. Changing it to tungsten white balance is gonna make our neutral light really bluish. It'll make our light that's really orange a little more neutral, but that's not a CTO gel, it's not a, a tungsten gel, it's a rust gel, whatever that means. So let's see what happens. Oh, interesting, it's terrible. Okay, so no. <laughs> yeah, well, what it did was it made the light on his face just look bad, right? So. So I like the rust on his face. I think let's make the, the backlight a color. Do we have other gels? Yeah, we do, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah well, just, I'm just gonna throw a gel in there. I've got some, uh, these gels, like uh, you could sell, Seth sells them after the fact. $75 a piece, pre-cut. That's a blue, right? Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna hold it in there for a second and see if it's working before I, Get crazy. Okay, try that. Good thing about speed lights is they don't produce a lot of heat, so you can just kind of just throw the gel on there. Right, we're, we're getting like a little funkier now, getting something a little more interesting. And again, the T-tail is going to compensate, in theory. Ah, that's better. Now, it's, now I think the whole thing's too bright, which we can actually just adjust now using the, uh, in the camera's uh, exposure compensation or the all in the, uh, not exposure conversation, but flash exposure conversation. It's like he's looking into a furnace. Yeah. It's such an interesting gel, rust. Yeah, rust is cool. I like that. Rust and chocolate are the best. Yeah. I am a fan of chocolate. Yeah, there we go. That's kind of interesting. Now it would just be a matter of working it. The only thing I don't like about this is I don't like how light's hitting his neck. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. No, no, but it could also be the angle. We could also tilt, or we could actually lower it. Or move it further back. Jump into your spot, let me see. I'm gonna move it back slightly, I think. Actually, I can also do this thing. Oh, it's already down, I guess. Oh. 
Yeah, I just want to get some more lead under his chin or less. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure which. I just know it needs to be different. Sometimes you're just feeling it out, right? I know it's not right. I'm not sure why it's not right. I'm just going to mess with it. Yeah, that'll give a little bit more. See his, his neck? I'm just trying to adjust his neck. Because I don't like that there's no delineation right here. What they lose the jawline? Yeah, I want to see that bottom part of the jawline. He spends a lot of time at the gym getting that jawline just right. Is that the wider Also, it creates, if you think about composition, like you have this light here, this triangle that we're creating here using this, uh, this light, which is kind of interesting compositionally. Um, I just don't want more of it. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, we're almost there. Little bits. interesting. Questions? Yes. Why does it look less blue? This picture in the middle that has a nice blue color, that and now it's less blue. No, the one that was really blue is because we changed the white balance. Oh. Yeah, this is just a small gel in front of the line. Yeah, we could make it more blue. Once um, I actually like that. I think the, now I think the jaw line is good. Um, I, I just have this one blue gel in here. I can gel it up a little bit more. I can double it up maybe. Try doubling it. See how, see how, oh, hold on. Let go of it. Try one more. Doubled up with my gel. So that's just more blue. You know, if you like the more blue, it's up to you guys. You know, what you think is better. Um, yeah. Cool. Questions, thoughts, concerns. No. All right. Cool. I think we're going to wrap two minutes early. Two minutes. Two minutes. All right. Okay. Cool. So uh, next week. Next week, right? Yeah. So, next week is open shoot. So that means we're going to have uh, some models here, of, uh, and we're going to set up some lighting scenarios. Bring your camera, bring a memory card, bring me some pizza. Uh, we're going to, you're going to be able to shoot some stuff, uh, get some pictures for your portfolio if you want. Um, come hang out with photographers. It's always a fun thing. Moses will be there probably to sign autographs. Um, and, uh, well, and for $10 a piece. We're not, it doesn't, uh, not for free. Um, <laughs> So we may or may not stream something next week. We'll see. So if you're watching online, tune in and you'll see if you're over here or not. Um, but then the week after that is something that I do not know. So open tune next week. I'll see you guys then. And then uh, after that, you check adorama.com slash events um, to see what else is coming up. Thanks, guys. Oh, oh, oh I got clapped. That's exciting. And I, I never get claps. Did you already cut the live stream? Yeah. Oh, I was going to pitch the portfolio thing. Ah, we'll do it next time. Well, Anyways, for people that are here, yeah, we're, we're, me and Seth are doing a, uh, what are we calling it? We're going to make fun of your photos, so if you yeah. want to submit, uh, we're going to have a, on the 13th, right? Yeah, the 